Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kelly Troutman. I am a certified hand therapist and this is Forward Therapy. You guys have probably figured out by now that one of my passions and something that I really love is connecting with members of the hand therapy community and especially my new grads or fieldwork students or people going into therapy professions that have an interest in upper extremity or hand therapy type rehabilitation. I think it's because I remember so much and so like closely to me like how hard it was in those months, in those years, um, in the first couple of years of my practice as a fieldwork student, like I remember how overwhelmed that I felt and how I felt like I didn't know where to go for information. There's so much to learn and you feel like it's just this huge mountain that you're climbing constantly. And the thing is, don't worry, because once you get to the top of this first mountain, you'll see that there's another mountain range off in the distance and you will always be learning. But I think the first couple of years where you're in school, or you're a fieldwork student, or you're just starting to get into hand therapy, it's such an overwhelming time. I think that it can be a really stressful time, a really scary time. And so I want to be there for all of you, kind of support you on your way and help you in any way that I can. And I just remember how hard it was for me at that time. And so like, I get you, I totally, I'm here with you. And um, yeah, today is another video kind of focused towards my newer hand therapists out there, people that are interested in the field of hand therapy. So on Instagram, a lot of times I get tons and tons of messages or tons and tons of comments asking me kind of like what types of resources or books or things like that would be good for me because I'm a new therapist in, you know, kind of interested in hand therapy or upper extremity rehab. So I get that question a lot. So I wanted to make a video all about that and some of the books that I thought were really helpful or some of the resources that I thought and still think are really helpful along my hand therapy journey. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. And I hope you guys really enjoy this video. So just a couple of disclaimers before we get started. So I am not, um, I have no financial interest in any of these resources. I'm not, you know, nothing to disclose here. I'm not sponsored, nothing like that. I just wanted to share exactly the materials that I've found to be most helpful for me and things that I think may be helpful for you as well. Um, this is not a all-inclusive list. I'm sure there are tons of other resources out there and I would actually love to hear from some of you too of what resources that you've found have been really super helpful for you. So if you have something that you've used or that you know of that's been a really helpful resource please comment it below and i think that would be a great opportunity for all of us to learn and, and kind of get some new materials out there too um, and then the other thing too is that i will list all of the titles and um, all of the information for these specific things that i'm talking about today in the description box so go ahead and check that out comment below if you have anything that i've missed and let's get started so the first resource that I have to talk about and mention is called Fundamentals of Hand Therapy. It's um, Cynthia Cooper is the author. It's a really, really great starting point for somebody who is in therapy um, program at school. They're not quite graduated yet. Um, you're a fieldwork student or you're a new grad, just somebody who's kind of interested or interested in dipping their toes into the hand therapy realm or the upper extremity rehab realm. It's also a great resource, you know, not necessarily for like a new grad, but if you've been a therapist for a few years and you're starting to kind of transition and, and have an interest in hand therapy and you want to learn more, it's an amazing foundation. So it goes through a lot of different chapters of different common upper extremity topics, diagnoses, pathologies, um, and it has a lot of really great clinical pearls in it as well. Um, it was actually a textbook for my grad school, so that's how I found that book. But I've I've had the iPad version ever since, and I, I really like it. I look back to it every once in a while for, for supplemental materials. So. And then, of course, the second thing that I um, found to be really helpful was actually something that I learned about when I was on fieldwork. So um, 
This is the old version of this book. They have just come out with a brand new, amazing version. Just this year it came out. So I still have the old version. Um, it was a really great resource for me when I was first starting out in field work. I used to kind of like take it home at night. I would take notes on it. Um, I would kind of like go through the protocols, take notes on that, take notes on like kind of the clinical considerations or important points. So as I was starting to develop this well-founded kind of realm of what hand therapy was, what the different diagnoses were, I could refer to this book and figure out kind of like, okay, that, you know, this is what you would do for a fracture versus tennis elbow versus arthritis, like all these different things. So a super great resource. Um, the new series is spiral bounds like this. It's, they've way upped the ante. I mean, it's way better than this version. So many more diagnoses, so many more surgical protocols. And of course it's more updated. This is a fairly old book. Um, and so it was not necessarily the most like cutting edge protocols, but certainly a good starting point. The newer version is amazing. Um, the only thing that I don't like about it is that it comes in four spiral bound notebooks instead of one. I understand totally why they did it because it's so, so much content it would not fit in one book but it is to me super annoying to have multiple books that you have to keep track of um, but just so you're aware it has like two books with the protocols and then two books of patient handouts so again super handy book would definitely recommend especially if you're starting to learn and you need some help with kind of like surgical protocols and making sure you keep your patients safe as well. And then if you guys know me, you know I always, always, always have to mention the Nutter's Human Anatomy Atlas. Um, I've had this book since undergrad. I will never get rid of it. I still look at it all the time. Um, it's just amazing when you're a visual learner like I am to be able to pull up a page and look at the different anatomical structures and how they work together to be able to refer to your surface anatomy on an actual person and be able to kind of locate things. Anatomy is the foundation and core of your treatment. So it doesn't, you know, necessarily fix everything, but if you have a good understanding of the anatomy, you're going to understand precautions, you're going to understand like the mechanics of the way people are moving and how to correct it too. So again, super great resource. I think everybody should have access to some sort of Atlas Anatomy. Um, certainly you can look online, but I like to have the, this is like a, my Bible. <laughs> I like to have it as a hard copy too. So that's another book that I would recommend. Um, another protocols book that I have found to be extremely helpful um, is the evidence-based hand and upper extremity protocols um, from Elizabeth de Herder. It is so good, you guys. She has two versions. The first version is a really small um, spiral bound book. The second version is like four times the size. It has way more protocols um, and it has the best structure ever. Like I don't, not every book makes sense to me. And the way that she goes through each clinical diagnosis, goes through like the considerations, um, the protocols, and kind of like, it, it's really truly a guideline. It just makes sense to me. It clicks in my brain. And so I really, really like it. The second edition is amazing. I would definitely purchase it. Um, another really great clinical resource. I don't have mine at home anymore because I brought it actually to the clinic that I work at because I like to refer to it while I'm at work. So it's been a really handy, handy, handy book to have around. Um, and just so you guys know, I still look at protocol books all the time. There's diagnoses that I won't see for a while and then I kind of forget like some of the clinical considerations or kind of the precautions that are specific degrees and things like that. So I always like to refer to the protocols. That way I feel more confident when the patients ask me questions um, so that I can answer them, you know, and people will ask you, well, how do I, how long do I have to be in this splint or, you know, how long will this take to heal or what's safe at what point? And it's nice to have an answer that's supported by evidence too, that you can just immediately spit out. And then textbook, last but not least, is going to, of course, 
how could I not mention Rehab of the Hand? This book, uh, I didn't actually purchase this two volume series until I was studying for the CHT exam. Um, I don't think it's necessary to own for sure as a new grad, but if you know that you're going to be going into hand therapy for sure, you know that you're going down the CHT path and that's a goal for you, buy the book. Um, they do come out with new versions fairly frequently, but I, I don't think that the information is really super outdated as long as you go maybe like one edition behind. Um, of course, in, you know, evidence changes over time and, and protocols will change, but a lot of this information is going to stay fairly consistent. So it's not a huge deal if you don't get, in my opinion, the most updated version. Um, I have the sixth edition and I love it. I secretly wish I had the seventh edition just because I'm a nerd and I like want the most updated information, but this book was great. I passed the CHT using this book and it worked just fine. Um, it is a, a, an expensive set and definitely an investment, but like I said, if you are somebody who knows you're going to go down this route of CHT, um, if you want for sure to be doing hand therapy, then I would definitely consider this book or maybe even ask your clinic if they will purchase it for you too as a resource. And then I just wanted to mention a couple of other websites that I found to be particularly helpful as well. So if, you know, not that we're looking for like one specific protocol as this law, right? Like we, we know that protocols are truly guidelines for us. But when you're a new therapist, you have to follow something, right? Like you have to find some resources to kind of like, okay, I understand why, you know, this maybe is not safe for a flexor tendon that's two weeks out, right? Like we need something to kind of give us a guideline. So one website that I've found to be really helpful um, is actually the Brigham and Women's um, educational website. They have actually a lot of like really helpful protocols. Their um, extensor tendon and their flexor tendon protocols I always reference. Anytime that I have a patient coming up or a case where it's a you know a tendon repair or something like that, I will always, always go. They have these really nice, beautifully organized grids that are easy to follow, separated by zone, separated by um, immobilization versus early active, etc. So that's super helpful. They tell you the split position, you know, the exercises, they give you suggestions, all those kinds of things. I think that that's super helpful and I will link those below here too because I like to reference those a lot. Um, the other website that I found to be pretty helpful too is also the, um, I believe it's the Sussex Hand Surgery. Um, they have a section of rehabilitation protocols too. And again, just a guidelines for you to kind of figure out what's going to be appropriate for this patient, what can I propose to the surgeon, and having some evidence behind it. So I will post again all of those below. Um, yeah, and I know this was a really long rambling video. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it or at least got something out of it. I know that sometimes it's not the most exciting to kind of just watch me sit here and talk to you, but I don't really know how else to kind of cover that topic without doing it this way. Um, anyway, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that it was helpful for you. If you know of any other resources that you think I missed that would be beneficial to, to other hand therapists or to myself, please link them below or at least, you know, kind of put the title below. Um, that way we can all kind of learn from each other and, and get good benefit out of this. So. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.